I wanted to rotate my block, but my text will also rotate. So let me show you how we can fix this. So we have a block here with a piece of text. I'm going to erase this text. It's a receptacle, but you can apply the same technique to any block. So let's edit this by double clicking on it and click accepting OK. The first step that we need to do <coughs> is to add a piece of text we want, a smart text, in this case, an attribute definition. So to add an attribute, I'm simply going to use the ATT shortcut on my keyboard, and we will have the attribute definition dialog box. So for a tag, I'm going to use an abbreviation type, and then for my prompt, I'm going to ask the question, what type is this receptacle? For my default here, it's basically the number or value that we use the most. Number one would be the most used. And for the justification, it's important to pick middle center. So our text keeps rotating from the center point. Textile standard, that's fine. My text height, eight inches, that's fine. The important part also is to make sure the lock position is checked. And let's click OK. So I need to specify my star point where I'm going to locate this. And doesn't really matter now. I can move it, but I'm going to place it over here. So if you place it incorrectly, you can still left click on it and move it as you wish. I'm going to place it there. That's fine for me. So again, we just added it a attribute definition here. Nothing really crazy. We didn't do anything special, but here comes the fun part. So we're going to add a couple of parameters as well as actions. And the first one is, of course, using our authoring palette. If you are not seeing it, go to your ribbon and it's here, authoring palette. You simply activate it or click on it. First, we're going to need is the point parameter. So let's click on it and following instructions, specify parameter location. So I'm going to make sure I select it by having this activated this or snap on the center of my attribute. So if you move around, you can see it in green there. So I'm going to click there. And then finally, I'm going to say specify the label. So the label location will be somewhere around here. So we added it a point parameter. But now you can see that there is an exclamation mark. If you are familiar with dynamic blocks, this means that there is something missing here. Well, what is missing? is an action to this parameter so it can function properly. Let's add an action. But before, we need to change some properties on this point parameter. So let's select our parameter point. And we need to scroll down and change a couple of things here. So the first thing is to change the chain action from no to yes. And then our number of grips from 1 to 0. So those are the two things that we need to modify on our point parameter in order for this to work and keep our text horizontally. But that's not all. What we need to do next is add our action to move our point. So it's here, move. So once we select it, say select parameter, I'm going to select this parameter and then says select objects. So the objects that we need to select, of course, are our attribute and also our parameter point. So let's select both and press enter. You can see automatically the exclamation mark went away. That means we did finish this first part. Now what we need to do is create our rotation parameter. So let's go to the authoring palette, go to parameters and add the rotation. So I'm going to click on it and then specify base point. So my base point got to be at 0, 0, however, I cannot snap on it. That's not a problem. I'm going to type 0, 0 and press enter. Once I do that, you can see that I'm starting from the 0, 0 origin point. Next, the radius of our parameter would be around this point parameter. So I'm going to click on it. And then finally, Oroka is asking the default angle. So I want, I want to activate this ortho mode. So that way I can go straight. I'm going to click on it. And boom, we see exclamation mark. 
This is again because he's missing an action. We're going to add it now, but before it's important to select our grip and move it by clicking on it. And I want to move it exactly on top of my receptacle like that. This is important because I want to rotate my receptacle from this point. So that's easier to rotate. Again, we're having a exclamation mark. So let's add an action really quick. Let's select the rotate action. So once we do that, let's follow the instructions asking to select a parameter. I'm going to select, of course, my rotation parameter. And then I need to create a selection. Be careful here. What we need to select is like this, everything but the attribute. So to deselect, I'm going to simply hold shift and deselect my piece of attribute like so and simply press enter. You can see the exclamation mark went away. That means this set of parameters and actions is completed. So let's quickly go over here to test our block because we don't want to keep adding and adding parameters and actions and then realize something is not working and then we need to figure it out where is the problem. So what we want to test is what happens if we add two values by double clicking on our attribute. Let's say something like 12. Will that text still rotate cleanly and nicely without touching our geometry? And the answer is yes. So at this point, we can close the block editor and save the changes to our new block. Now we can see here that we're not seeing the attribute, even though we double click on the block. This is because we're missing a final step, which is to kind of refresh or sync our block with the ATT sync. And that way we can select our block and that way we can see our attribute over there. So again, this is what we created today. Hopefully this technique can help you improve your workflow in AutoCAD because it does for me every time.